I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get started with the No Half Step and Hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Uh, once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're going to educate about the show. The last when you click on that merchandise tab, take you straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you've come to know and love and expect from Renegades Puck are all still available in our online store, whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets. Makes no difference to the Renegades Puck. Something like 88 different items in our online store. It's the best said that we've sold out so that you, right there, you can buy in. Social media is critical importance to this operation, so here's how you can jump in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. You can find us on X and Threads. You can find us on Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok, please. Whatever it is you prefer as far as your social media experience goes, give the Renegades of Puck a follow along. We try to create content for each and every one of those different platforms, and sometimes it's different content on different platforms, so if you feel, please follow us on numerous platforms. It doesn't cost you a second, and it certainly doesn't take it doesn't cost you a penny, and it certainly only costs you about a second. So please, jump in the trenches with Renegades Puck on social media today. When it comes to YouTube, we are so appreciative of our great friend Carlos out in Memphis, always checking out the newest episodes of Renegades of Puck TV, just like you can, by subscribing to the channel. So stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you out there who's checked out the YouTube channel. Again, recaps, previews, breakdowns, interviews, all right there on our YouTube channel. Just another part of the multimedia facet known as the Renegades of Puck podcast. Now, the podcast itself in audio form from local to global in 2023 to 2024, thanks to the Full Press NHL Network, the Full Press Predators podcast is being heard by more renegades than ever before. Rapidly approaching 10 million all-time downloads and replays in show history, we are so extremely appreciative. That is not a milestone to take lightly in the industry that we are in, so we are so super appreciative. You can find the podcast on Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon, several other platforms, whatever it is you prefer to listen to your podcasts on just search renegades of puck today you'll be able to find the show when it comes to making a financial donation to the show you do that by going to venmo search renegades puck or scan the qr code that's currently on your screen every dollar goes a long way to helping the renegades of puck and take a look around you can see how much you right there you renegades watching and viewing at home have helped build this studio out you even helped us buy a jam box for the room a great bunch of people you are super appreciative of each and every one of you for helping us out and helping us be able to create and build the business that we wanted to build from the beginning and we've done that thanks to generous running it's just like you out there so again stick taps love and respect and listen i know it's time to get to know have seven hockey coverage so let's deliver the goods time for operation number 877 that's right time for show number 877 and at this moment in hockey history the national partners currently find themselves in fourth place in the central division after 59 games skated 32 25 and 2 is their overall record record 66 points on the season they have a home record which is where their next game will take place of 14 15 and 0 a road record of 18 10 and 2 those 18 wins on the road represent a tie for the most amount of road victories in the central division the printers have scored 184 goals this season they have given up 187 against the goal differential is at minus three closer than it's been in some time to the plus side of the ledger now i've told you the printers are in fourth place with 66 points so let's tell you about not only the central division but let's update you on the latest wild card standings as well the three-team weave at the top of the central division continues as the dallas stars now have 79 points the winnipeg jets are at 77 points but have four games in hand over the dallas stars the colorado avalanche are at 75 points in third place and then you'll find the wild card pack which is the nashville predators at the top of that grouping right now with 66 points just to give you the distance the predators are nine points behind an automatic qualifying spot which would be third place in the central the st louis blues are in fifth place at 62 points the minnesota wilder in sixth place at 62 points so that's your wild card grouping with a couple of teams from the pacific of course then minnesota and arizona and chicago seventh and eighth place in the central 51 points now for arizona and 35 for chicago the air arizona coyotes have just truly fallen right off the pace there now 15 points behind the Nashville Predators. If you remember the last time those two teams played, which wasn't all that long ago on the calendar, uh, Arizona was only five points behind the Predators and could have closed the gap to three on that particular day. But the Nashville Predators now 15 points ahead of the Arizona Coyotes. Now, when it comes to the wild card, because this is of critical importance to the show and moving forward, 
the LA Kings in wild card one, 68 points. The National Predators hold wild card two with 66 points. So the National Predators have closed that gap on LA while jumping over St. Louis during this most recent road trip. The St. Louis Blues are the first team on the outside looking in four points behind Nashville at 62 points. And Minnesota is also at 62 points. That's got you updated on the Central Division standings, the wild card standings. And now we've got a hockey game to drill down and talk about for this Nashville Predators team. It's been a long time on the road. The West Coast swing comes to an end. And now back home on ice face off against the Ottawa Senators. We'll get into that matchup momentarily. But once the Preds finish this trap game, I'm labeling it a trap game, five games on the road, five successful games on the road, coming back home. Now a team that's in seventh place over in the Eastern Conference. I'm suspicious of this one. After the National Predators wrap up this game against the Ottawa Senators Thursday, they will welcome in the Minnesota Wild. That is an important game when it comes to the wild card race. Then they will welcome in the Colorado Avalanche on Saturday. Tuesday, the Montreal Canadiens will be in town. And on the 7th of March, the Predators will face off against the Buffalo Sabres. So five games coming up at Bridgestone Arena before the Preds head back out on the road on March 9th. we will take on the Columbus Blue Jackets for only the first time uh, this season. It's so weird to see a uh, opponent this late in the season be the first time on the schedule so the Preds uh drastically important games with Minnesota and possibly Colorado coming up here the Preds could close that gap nine points behind the abs right now at this point in time Bridgestone Arena about to be hot back on the normal traditional schedule Tuesday Thursday Saturday for a little while start times at seven o'clock let's all get our brains reset after the west coast madness let's all get ourselves refocused on that now for uh, the preds and the sense uh, this is the second of two regular season meetings they met back on january the 29th it was the ottawa senators winning on home ice four two three in overtime it was soros 31 out of 35 taking the loss mccarran trennan and tomasino picked up the goals for the preds sogard got the start got pulled after giving up three goals fairly quickly uh, eight out of 11 but did not take the loss as a matter of fact jonas corpusalo came Came in, went 17 out of 17 the rest of the way and picked up the victory in overtime. Stutzel Kachuk had a goal and assist, each won uh, two points, and Batherson and Drew had one goal each to make up the other goals for the Ottawa Senators. Again, the Ottawa Senators come into tonight's action on the second night of back-to-back. So that's the other the, the other element of the, the trap game. The Devils came in here not that long ago on the second night of back-to-backs and all these similar circumstances, and the Devils dramatically outplayed the person in that one. Let's not see that again tonight. The Sens, after last night's loss 25 28 and 353 points has them seventh overall in the Atlantic division 8 15 and one on the road they've scored 189 that's not a bad number they've given up 199 they have a goal differential of minus 10 on the season their goal differential really got skewed a little bit last night let's go back and talk about the last night and their previous five games on the 19th of February it was a four to two win at Tampa Bay not an easy thing to do on the 20th the next night a three to two overtime loss at Florence and pick up three out of four points Points on the road in that back-to-back scenario a little bit earlier in the month, so be aware of that on the 22nd of February. 4-1 win versus Dallas. Again, not very easy to do. A 4-3 shootout win versus Vegas on the 24th. And on the 26th of February, which was last night, a 6-3 loss at Washington, and it was Forsberg getting the start. 6 out of 10, giving up 4 goals, took the loss. Corpus Allo came in relief, gave up 2 goals as well, went 8 out of 10 in that game. So the Ottawa Senators, before losing that game to the Washington Capitals, had managed to eke out some pretty good victories over some decent teams and collect some points. So the Predators, for a lot of reasons, I'm labeling this, uh, I'm, I'm warning, this is potentially a suspect night at Bridgestone Arena coming back home after a successful five-game road trip, getting back in a playoff spot, and taking the auto centers lightly because they're a seventh-place team from the Eastern Conference, and they're on the second night of back-to-backs. If the Preds come out and give a half-step in effort tonight, the auto centers are going to beat them clean at Bridgestone Arena. They've already beaten them once this season. The Preds are lucky to have a point out of that game. Talking about this particular matchup, here's the updated statistics. And again, remember, this Ottawa Senators team is kind of a weird, weird setup. 3.34 goals per game is eighth overall in the National Hockey League. Top 10 in number of goals scored on season goals per game. Goals against 3.55 for the Ottawa Senators, though, is 30th. For the Predators, 3.08 goals per game is 17th. Goals against 3.17 is 20th. A very narrow margin of victory between goals for and goals against for this Predators team. Narrow margin of error shots for the auto center generating 32.4 shots on goal per game that's eighth in the nhl again their second eighth overall rating in the nhl on the offensive side 
of things. Shots for Nashville, 31 on net per game, 13th in the league. Shots against 30.4 is 19th. The Ottawa Senators giving up 29.8 per game. That is 13th. When it comes to special teams, the Nashville Predators do have the better metrics in both of these trackable categories. Power play, the Predators general converting at 18.5% is 21st in the league. 38 out of 205, the Ottawa Senators 16.2% conversion rate is 26. 32 out of 197. Now, when it comes to the PK, Preds killing off 75.9% this season. That's 27th in the league. 45 power play goals against is still a pretty damn high number, though. Penalty kill for the Ottawa Senators is 73.8%. That has them at 30th. Only two spots from the bottom of the league. 44 power play goals against. So, wrapping up the statistics from the team perspective, uh, you see the National Press have zero top 10 metrics, only one top 15, only two top 20. So you look over at the other side, and the auto senators have two top eight metrics, and then they also have a 13th overall, but they also have two 30th in the league uh, metrics. So it is a, a weird, weird setup with this auto centers team. What it really means is you can't take them lightly. At any given time, the auto centers are capable of having a pretty decent game and putting up a decent number of goals. So Purdue's got to find a lot of reasons tonight to bring the jam and bring the energy uh, from the start. That'll be done by the leading scorers on the team. Philip Forsberg is 28 goals and 31 assists for 59 points. Back to a point per game pace on the season. Captain Roman Yossi, 12 goals and 42 assists for 54 points. Ryan O'Reilly, third on the national purpose, scoring 20 goals, 28 assists, 48 points. Gus Nyquist is at 15 after his empty net run on that five-game road trip. 15 goals, 31 assists for 46 points. Tommy Novak, fifth on the team in scoring, 12 goals, 19 assists for 31 points over on the auto senator side of things Stutzel leads them in scoring 14 goals 39 assists for 53 points but drew is 18 and 34 for 52 kachuk is 26 and 24 for 50 so again three players on the auto centers with 50 points or more Predators only have two of those players in the Predators playoff team the auto centers are in seventh place Batherson, 19 goals, 24 assists for 43 points on the season and tarasenko 15 and 23 for 38 no idea how Ottawa's going to deploy their goaltenders tonight. Forsberg and Corpusala both played last night in Washington. I'll give you both of their numbers just to cover both sides. Forsberg is now 11 9 0 8 8 9 save percentage 3.25 goals against average. Jonas Corpusala 13 18 and 3 and 8 8 7 save percentage 3.39 goals against average. Again, both of them faced 10 shots on goal in the game last night. Uh, both of them played uh, almost about the same amount of time, uh, but uh, it was Forsberg getting pulled after giving up four. In that game, UC Soros in net for the Nashville Predators, 23, 21, and 2, a 904 save percentage, 2.95 goals against average with two shutouts on the season. Listen, I've said it like four times already. It's suspicious. It's potentially a trap game, and it is something the Nashville Predators coaching staff needs to be focused on. The uh, level of focus uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually coming into this game tonight. They cannot take the Ottawa Senators lightly. They've already lost one game to the Ottawa Senators. That's the easiest way to remind them. Coming back after a successful road trip and now having that first of five at home, getting back in your bed, getting a little bit more comfortable, taking a team from the Eastern Conference lightly. I hope all of these things are just me being a, a little bit paranoid, but uh, I'm concerned going into tonight's game. The Preds have a losing record on home ice this season, 14 15 and 0. Would love nothing more than to see them correct that, get that back to 500, and then go on a run on the home rink like they've done on the road. That would go a long way to solidifying this team over the final 20 games of this season. That's got you all set up. Nashville Predators finally back home on more of a traditional schedule Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday over the next week. And we are back in the bunker covering every single bit of it. So glad to have everybody back in Nashville, see all of our good friends, and to see everybody back at Bridgestone Arena. That's going to do it. For the preview segment, we've got to talk about the Reverse Sports full game recap. Well, that, it comes up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sports, a match made in hockey. 
It's now time for the Reroad Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to February 25th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were in Anaheim to face off against the Ducks for the third and final time of this regular season. It also happens to be the fifth game of a five-game road trip, second night of back-to-backs. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys lines in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, Nyquist, Trennan, Sissons, and Glass, Jankowski, Novak, Evangelista, Smith, McCarran, and Sherwood, Yossi, and Fabro, McDonough, Shen, Luzon, Carrier, better known as the same exact line combination to defensive pairings as the previous four games. If it ain't broke, don't fix it is the mentality. Lankanen gets to start in net on the second night of back-to-backs. We're 142 into the first period, and it's just all coming up with a save on Jankowski. First shot on goal of the game at 229 of the first. Just all comes with a save on Carey, 402. Lankanen comes with a save on Leeson's deflection. First save of the game for Lankanen. 514. Lankanen comes up with a save on Lundstrom's backhand. 623 mark at the first period. Lankanen comes up with a save on Henrique at the 646 mark. We see Lankanen coming with a save on Johnston's slap shot. And the Nashville Predators are simply slow to get just about anywhere. And Anaheim is getting plenty of time and space, especially in the most dangerous areas in and around the Nashville Predators net. The Preds defense, not sharp, but Lankanen is so far in the first. 851 into the game. Lankanen comes up with a save on Lynch from 944. Lankanen another save. This time on Carlson. The Preds continue to be slow to wake up in this game on the second night of back-to-backs at 1059 of the first period. It's Dostal coming up with save on McCarron. Then we find our first special teams situation of the game. The Predators' fourth line finally broke the pressure of the Anaheim Ducks and they draw a penalty. Carrick off the box, two minutes four, tripping on Sherwood. No Stalkins with a save on Forsberg's wrist shot, then another save on Nyquist, but the Preds never really threatened or were in a dangerous position during this power play. At the 14:59 mark of the first period, it's Lankanen with five-on-five five action coming up with a save on Strom at 15 away. Lankanen comes up with another save on on Strom at 16.35. Lankanen again back to work. A save on McTavish with the edge of the glove and it trickles just wide of the post. This was in a really scary and dangerous series. 1812 of the first period. It's Luzon versus Carrick. Five minutes each off to the box for fighting. A good and quick scrap here in the first period. 1958. Dostal comes with a save on glass. We hit the end of the period and it is no score in the game. It is now Nashville with eight shots on goal. Anaheim with eight shots on goal. We flip over to the clean sheet and the second period, just 15 seconds in. And it's Lankanen coming up with a save on McTavish at one minute even of the second period. It's the captain, Roman Yossi, coming up with his 12th goal of the season. This was one heavy shot from out high, and it beats Dostal, giving the Nashville Predators a 1-0 lead. The captain, Roman Yossi, with his 12th, 123 of the second period. It's Gudis off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. No Stalkin will save on Luke Evangelista with the National Purse power play again. Rather ineffective against not a very highly rated penalty kill here in the Anaheim Ducks. Only one shot on goal at the 338 mark of the second period. It's Lankanen coming up with a save on Carlson's deflection in close at 419. Lankanen another save, this time on Kalorn at the 745 mark. The National Purse pick up a shot on goal right here by Luke Evangelista stop by Dostal at 820 of the second period. It's Kevin Lankanen coming up with a save on Leeson. Another deflection. Leeson was doing a good job of getting into the interior in good dangerous areas and getting opportunities for deflections this entire game. In 8.51 of the second period, Carey off to box wins for interference. The Ducks getting their first opportunity at a power play and that finds Lankanen coming up with a save on Henrique and then Lankanen coming up with another save on Strom. The Nashville Predators penalty kill does just enough as we cross over the halfway point of this game at the 11.04 mark back to even strength hockey. We find Dostal coming up with a save on Michael McCarron at the 11.54 mark. It is Lunderstrom coming up with his third goal of the season. It was Shen in the neutral zone, misplayed the puck off of the wall, and that allowed for an odd man rush into the defensive zone. Wrist shot comes from the slot. Glass could not do anything to get back in time on the back check. Just could not get there. Anaheim breaks through after having quite a bit of pressure here in this second period. Now this game is tied up at one apiece. 13.06 now into the second period. It's Gudis off the box. Two minutes four high, sticking his second minor penalty of the period. It is Dostal coming with a save on Ryan McDonough. And then Dostal coming with a save on Carey. So two shots on goal, both by defensemen coming out from out high. 
why the National Predators not able to get to the interior, not able to bring the good solid jam on this power play. Again, uh, we flip over to the backside of the sheet of paper. We find a 16.05 of the second period. So it's all coming with a save by the captain, Roman Yossi, at 1635 of the second. It's Lankanen coming with a save on Carlson on the one-timer, sliding across a big-time save right here. A good amount of athleticism is displayed by Lankanen. We go to the 17.54 mark, and it's Gudis off to the box again. Two minutes for holding this time on Tommy Novak. It was really, uh, could have been called a number of different penalties, but it was called a holding uh, on the score sheet. We'll move on from there, and it's Dostal going back to work and coming up with big saves on Yossi, and then on Forsberg, and then again on Forsberg. We hit the end of the second period. The Nashville Predators gaining some pressure there at the end of the period thanks to that power play, but I, unable to convert. We will go to the third period with the shots on goal at 20 apiece and the game tied at one apiece. Now into the final 20 minutes of regulation hockey and we are 46 seconds in and we find Sherwood off the box two minutes before tripping the Anaheim Ducks came out just buzzing at here. Start of the third period. Lankanen comes up with a save on Minchikoff plus the follow-up jam by McTavish. Sherwood out of the box clears the loose puck of the rebound out of the middle slot area. This was one of the more dangerous scoring opportunities of the game for the Anaheim Ducks. Unable to convert. There were bodies piled up everywhere. There were rebounds being fired off of legs, off of butts, off of backs, off of just about everything else, but none of them found their way into the net. Just after that, as it typically goes in the hockey world, 326 of the third period, it's Philip Forsberg with his 28th goal. Uh, the season was a wrist shot from out high after Novak's clean face-off win. Forsberg curled around to the middle of the zone and picked his spot, took the shot, and sniped for his team leading 28th of the season, giving the National Predators back there. One goal lead, two to one now in favor of the Nashville Predators at the 451 mark of the third period. It's Lankin coming with a save on Kalorin at 730 of the third. It's Dostal coming with a save on Luke Evangelista at 818 of the third period. It's Dostal coming with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. And at 843 of the third period, it's Michael McCarron getting his eighth goal of the season. Rebound, put back jam, getting to the high danger area and doing the hard work and getting reward. Fabro took the long shot. Dostal stopped it, but the rebound was right there. McCarron not only got to the rebound, but tucked it around the goaltender into the net for his eighth goal of the season, giving the National Predators a two-goal lead, 3-1 three to one here in the third period. At 9.29 of the third, it's Lankanen coming in with a save on Frank Petrano at 10.32. Dostal comes with a save on McDonough at 11.35. Dostal a save on McCarron. We hit the 13-minute mark now of the third period. It's Lankanen coming in with a save on Gudis. Fast-moving pace to this third period. The clock is dissolving quickly. 14.17. Lankanen a save on Kalorn. 16.30 Dostal comes up with a save on Sissons at the 1736 mark of the third period. It's Leeson's seventh goal of the season. The low high play works the great success from behind the net below the goal line to the side of the crease for the easy finish. Leeson was getting into the interior and being dangerous all night long. And this time he finishes his seventh, makes it three to two now in favor of the Nashville Predators. With the extra attacker on just mere seconds later at 1758 over the third period, it's Gus Nyquist the empty net specialist with his 15th goal of the season, his third empty net goal of the five-game road trip. Nyquist's 15th goal of the season restores the Nashville Predators to a goal lead. Now 4-2 to two in favor of the Nashville Predators. At 18-41 with the extra attacker on, the captain Romeo he clears the puck over the glass. It is, in fact, ruled to be a delay of game penalty. Lankinen comes up with a save on McIntosh and then McTavish, and then Lankinen comes up with a huge save on Henrique. The rebound goes off of the post. It's held on the goal line Lankin, an, an incredible job right here with his final save of the game. Nashville Predators are going to win this game 4-2 to two in Anaheim. The Ducks will outshoot the Nashville Predators 32-29. to 29. And for the Nashville Predators, it is the first time in franchise history, in their 25th year of existence, the first time in franchise history, that the Nashville Predators have swept a five-game road trip. We said going into this road trip, taking 75%, 7 out of 10 of the points would be really a great way for the Nashville Predators to rebound from what they had been going through as of late. They went for the optimal top shelf level. They went five out of five, winning all five, and they also picked up all ten points on this road trip. They are back in playoff position, and the Nashville Predators have their groove back on the road. This team is unstoppable right now. They sweep the five-game road trip 
including important games in the playoff race in L.A. and also against St. Louis. That's going to do it for the Reverse Sports Full Game Recap. Full analysis and so much more coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant, Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been, what you were going through, and where you were going, and I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Let's start with Lankanen in net as we get to the analysis and opinion portion of the show. 29 out of 31, and he was just outstanding in this game, especially there in the first period. The Preds did not have their skates underneath them in any way, shape, or form. They were slow all over the rink. They were slow to react. They were slow in the D zone, and they were slow getting to pucks, and that's where Kevin Lankanen came in, and he bailed this Preds team out early in this game and made some pretty big saves uh, throughout the game, but it was especially the first First seven, eight minutes of the game where Lankanen probably did his best work of the entire night. So Lankanen picks up the win in this one. Good job by Kevin Lankanen coming in on the back end of this back-to-back at the end of the road trip and securing the final two points for his Nashville Predators team on this five-game swing. Forsberg had a goal and assist now. Two points in this game. 28 goals on the season. I was a little more bullish going into the road trip. I thought Forsberg was going to feast on some of these lesser teams out there on the West Coast. He still ate pretty well, but he didn't feast. 28 goals. I predicted he'd come back home with 30. So he picked up three goals on the five-game road trip. Now, overall, 59 points. That does his restore his points per game. Uh, pace for the season and he also had five shots on goal in this game which is fantastic for Philip Forsberg so good to see him coming alive here at the end of the road trip 533 in power play time on ice and 1922 in total time on ice that's a lot of minutes for a forward on the second night of back-to-backs the captain Roman knows he's speaking of a lot of minutes on the second night of back-to-back let's start with that 23-12 in this game to lead the national predators but he also scored a goal to hell of a shot from out high big heavy shot one of his four shots on goal in this game and for the captain Roman and Yossi, the number one scorer all time in franchise history ahead of Philip Forsberg now at the end of this road trip. Uh, you have got to uh, point out the leadership aspect of this. Five games for the National Predators when they were down in the dumps. The GM wasn't letting them have any fun and they were absolutely sliding and Roman Yossi helped turn this thing around. Five wins the first time the National Predators have ever won a five game road trip, swept the road trip. So impressive stuff for Roman Yossi picking up a goal, four shots a goal, 23-12 leads the team and also helps lead to that fifth victory on the road trip. McCarron picks up a goal, also has four shots on goal. He brings the jam, goes to the front of the net, cashes in on Fabro's rebound off of the long shot. It's a great job by Michael McCarron. He had an assist the previous night in San Jose, picks up a goal in this game, and he just continues bringing the jam out there on the rink. I don't understand why people have such issue with Michael McCarron. He's chipping in offensively. He does a lot more than just go out there as a fourth-line grinder. He's good on the faceoff, and he's certainly in imposing physical player when needed to be, but he doesn't overdo it. Nyquist in this game. The empty net specialist picks up his third empty net goal of the road trip. And listen, Nyquist now at 15 goals in the season with his National Purse team. He's got a reasonable chance to get to 20 goals on the season. Should be over 50 points. Well, if he gets to 20 goals, he will be over 50 points. He's at 31 assists and 46 points in the season. But Nyquist was a, in a little bit of a slump there, and now it seems like the empty net is helping him re- gain his confidence three empty net goals on this road trip for Gus Nyquist so he shows that the coaching staff trusts him in late game scenarios to be a good defensive forward and it also shows that he has the skill and the acumen to put the puck into the net when he gets the opportunity he's done it from uh, multiple locations on the ice he even had a defender in front of him so it wasn't as easy as just throwing it at the net so Nyquist the empty net specialist picks up his third on the trip now 15 on the season Dante Fabro at two 
two assists in this game. And you know what? This is a notation I really want to make. It's impressive enough that they, one of the defenders got two assists in this game. So for Dante Fabro, that is fantastic news. Also had two block shots. Also had a shot on goal, 14-39 in total time and ice. But this is what I really wanted to point out. The team is 5-0 and since Dante Fabro returned from healthy scratch. That is something we talked about before the road trip, how it wasn't Dante Favreau's fault, and maybe the best thing for Dante Favreau was not being in the lineup for that game where the Predators gave up nine goals to the Dallas Stars. Dante Favreau was fantastic on this road trip. No, it wasn't perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect defenseman. They give up plays. They make mistakes. Sometimes they get out of position, but Dante Favreau was really good on this road trip, and the team is 5-0 and since he got back in the lineup from being healthy scratched. That's going to do it for the analysis portion of of this here episode let's hear from our good friends at stripe digital we'll come back we'll talk about the good cold hard numbers known as the box score and then we'll close episode number 876 out we'll be right back right here on the renegades of puck podcast the digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business and that's why stripe digital solutions is here to help i know because that's exactly what stripe digital solutions did for me and the renegades of puck From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that. It's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner, and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Time for the box score. Your goal scorer for this Nashville Predators team, Philip Forsberg, Michael McCarron, Gus Nyquist with the empty netter, and the captain, Roman Yossi. Those are your four goal scores, three from the forwards, one on the defensive side of things. When it comes to assists, Fabro led the team with two. Sherwood had one. O'Reilly had one. Novak, all he does is make plays. He had one, and Philip Forsberg also had one. So Tommy Novak also got knocked around a whole lot last time. He seemed to draw the ire of the Anaheim Ducks all night long, but was also helping draw penalties. Shots on goal. Phil Forsberg led the way with five in this game. Michael McCarron had four. The captain, Roman Yossi, had four. When it comes to block shots, it was Cody Lass with five in this game. Also, Ryan McDonough with five. Alex Carrier chips in with three. Nobody else above two. In the physical component of things, a little crooked number right here. Luzon with eight hits in this game. Also, had a fighting major in this game. Sherwood had five hits. Shen had four hits in this game. When it comes to your time on ice leaders, second night of back-to-backs, Andrew Burnett did a good job in the first night, rolling all four lines against San Jose, and had to do so again in Anaheim, and was able to balance things out quite well. Your time on ice leader was Philip Forsberg among the forwards, 19-22 in total time on ice, and then O'Reilly at 18-23, and Nyquist at 17-10. That's good balance right there for the top line, not getting overextended the first night in San Jose and not being relied upon too much versus Anaheim on the last night of the road trip. On the defensive side of things, we did have three defenders get over 20 minutes in total time on ice. Yossi, of course, 23-12, led the total team on ice. McDonough, 22-42, and Luzon, 20-15, despite sitting in the box for five minutes in this game. When it comes to the power play, the National Pers were 0 for 4 in this game. Philip Forsberg led in time on ice at 5:33. Nyquist had 5:13, but Roman Yossi, 6:26 seven in power play time on ice and the national players unable to convert on any of their four opportunities penalty kill though was perfect and this was a big help three out of three by the penalty kill let's give some stick taps to the penalty killers that were out there on the rink 408 and 408 time on ice for mcdonough and shen that is impressive that is a lot of hard minutes out there on the forward side of things 231 shorthanded time on ice for cole smith 212 for citizens and 135 for ryan o'reilly again power play over four penalty kill three for three face-off winning percentage 53.7 for the national person it's good to be on the positive side of 50 again 27 hits nice step up from the previous night in San Jose. i think in san jose the scorekeeper the official scorekeeper i think he, he dozed off uh, for a couple of minutes in that game because the numbers were so depressed in that game they were so low 27 hits seems a little bit more normal against anaheim especially 21 block shots for the person that also again seems more normal and five takeaways but seven giveaways don't like being on the negative side of the takeaway giveaway battle in that one let's close this thing out because that's that's all that's going to fall out of the box score there's nothing else Lankin went 29 out of 31 he gave up two goals against an in-game save percentage of 935 23 even strike saves four power play saves two shorthand saves again stellar performance in the early parts of this game allowing the national purse to slowly get their skates
skates under them. By the by the middle of the first period, they started getting their skates under them. They got a power play. Then they started putting on some offense. And then the Predators were able to secure that fifth victory of the road trip. So impressive stuff. So that's where we close things out. Five out of five on the road trip. Five and oh, picked up 10 points. We said optimal was seven out of 10. So what is above optimal? This is just about as good as can possibly be. It's a franchise record for the National Predators. Five straight road wins on this five-game road trip. And now five home games. An opportunity to write the home record, which currently is 14-15-0. The road record, 18-10-2. Whatever it is the Predators have managed to do on the road, whether it's simplifying, whether it's checking into the hotel, whatever they got to do. Well, now that they're back here for this five-game homestand, they've got some games that they should be able to win and continue putting pressure on the teams in front of them in the standings. The Predators right now, it's not realistic to think about the division championship and this national Predators team. It's not realistic, but to put it in perspective, the Predators currently are 12 points behind the Dallas Stars with the same number of games played, just 12 That's not so bad after 59 games skated and game 60 coming up and the next five being on home ice. If the Preds manage to make a run during this homestand, they could start putting a lot of pressure on teams like the Colorado Avalanche, who they will face on this upcoming homestand, and also several others. All right, listen, that's going to do it for talking about the road trip. I am so happy the Preds are going to be back home. I'm happy to see everybody back in Nashville. I'm happy to get some more normal start times. I'm happy to get some more rest. I'm happy to be done with this back-to-back stuff for at least a little while. So for the National Prayers, fantastic job. Can't describe it any better than that. 5-0, and 10 points on the road trip, and they played really good, strong games against important Western Conference opponents at L.A., at St. Louis, at Vegas. San Jose and Anaheim, those were teams they needed to beat, teams below them in standings, and teams they did beat. It wasn't always up pretty, but it was effective. That's going to do it for Operation Number 876. But wait, I want to take you back one more time. Just just, just one more time with me. I want to take you back to the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena in Nolensville, Tennessee. It was the last night of the regular season for the Nashville Spartans. Cannot believe it. Cannot believe the season has already come and gone. The Spartans have qualified for the playoffs. I'll let the report sum it all up and give you all the infos and all the details. But listen, Nashville hockey community or anyone, from around the region. The Nashville Spartans have a playoff game on a Sunday night, March the 10th at 6.30. This team deserves your support. This team has been out there just slugging it out in the Great Lakes Division, playing incredible hockey, putting up just unbelievable offensive numbers. They've got great defense. They've got great goaltending. They've got great power forwards that can put the puck in the net with regularity and ease. It's truly an incredible lineup. They deserve your support. Let's all get out there and support our hometown junior team, the Nashville Spartans. Being the voice of the Spartans, it sure would mean a lot to me to see each and every one of you at the ring. I take you now to Nolensville, Tennessee, as we close out the regular season versus the Cincinnati Cyclones. I'm Charlie Sonia, the voice of the Nashville Spartans, and tonight, the sun sets on the regular season for the Nashville Spartans on the USPHL premiere in the Great Lakes Division. It's the final home game of the regular season, but it's not all sad because the Nashville Spartans have already clinched a playoff berth. They come into tonight's final game of the regular season with a record of 35-7-1, 71 points. Still work to be done. A regular season scoring champion to be determined as we have a three-way tie at the top of the stats leaders right now. Ronan Keenan with 85 points, Kyle Flynn with 85 points, and the captain, Austin McCauley, with 85 points as well. Daniel Duzik is 17-6 and one of the 2.09 goals against average. That's fifth best in the USPHL. Last night, it was the Spartans defeating the Cyclones 15 to nothing on home ice. It was Sean Caraman with three goals and four assists for seven points. Keenan, three goals and two assists for five points. Flynn had a goal and three assists for four points. Walker, a goal and three assists for four points. And Hurt got the shutout, his second of the season going 15 out of 15. Shots on goal were 88 to 15. Nashville Spartans hockey coming up just behind me over the hills in the most beautiful community you've ever seen, Nolensville, Tennessee. Come and join us tonight at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. I'm Charlie Sonye, voice of the Nashville Spartans. Swords up, prepare for glory. Good evening, Spartans fans. Tonight's a very special night as we honor our 2003 birthday players that are playing in their final regular season game of their junior hockey career. Ladies and 
And welcome in everybody to the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. It's the final night of the regular season here for the Nashville Spartans. Tonight, the Spartans close the weekend series against the Cincinnati Cyclones. It's family night. Just wrapped up an incredible pregame presentation, giving out flowers to all of our incredible families and all of our players that will be spending their final night of the regular season in junior hockey. Of course, for the Nashville Spartans, it's not all sadness. Tonight is not the end. Tonight is the beginning of the next chapter as the Nashville Spartans have already clinched a playoff berth and will have their first playoff game in team history on March the 10th here at the Gary Force Hacker Ice Arena at 6.30. Tonight, we're almost seven minutes in. 0-0 zero, zero is your score. Caraman rips it and ends that thought process, though. Bar down, wrist shot from a sharp angle for Sean Caraman. 13-14 to go in the first period. Spartans lead one to nothing. Spartans get the goal right there. That's going to be a great piece of jam right from the front of the net. It's going to be Gino and Delicato off to the bench first for glove taps. 2 nothing. Spartans 10-43 remaining. Here in the first period, and Delicato holds the puck. He's on the backhand, he turns around. Wheels looks to set up the play, sends it back out to the blue line. Spartans have plenty of room to take that shot. Novak takes the shot, and that knuckler goes into the net. On the backhand now, sends it back out. And that shot on net is going to allow the Spartans to get another rebound opportunity, and that puck is going to be put back in into the net. In midair, while falling down Bobby Orr style. It is Mason Hartz putting the goal into the net. More jam from number 85 for the Nashville Spartans. Corey Walker holds. He looks to take the shot, sends it across to Murray. Murray puts it on net, and that puck is chipped in. More jam by the Nashville Spartans. Corey Walker gets the play started and sets everything up just perfectly for the other Walker. It's Walker to Walker here at the Gary for Acura Ice Arena. Spartans maintain possession. They'll fire it on the net, and Chris Free is going to chip that puck in the net. It's a power play goal for the Nashville Spartans, making it 7-0 here in the first period. Free brings the jam for the Spartans, though they take the puck down to the other end of the rink, and they put it in. That's going to make it 8-0 in favor of the Nashville Spartans. And Sakowski was there in the corner, frees the puck, gets it out high, sends it over to Chisholm. Chisholm fires it on net. That's going to be off the iron and in. Spartans on the board again. Nashville Spartans to the net, and they are going to not. They are going to get the goal. The goaltender faked me out on that one. Don't put that one on my demo reel. That's a bad goal call. We'll take the draw to center ice, as a matter of fact.
And Delicato catches the puck, hands it to himself, passes it to Murray, and Murray deposits it in the net for the hat trick. An incredible play right there by the Nashville Spartans. Gino and Delicato to set the play up for Murray to pick up the hat trick. Gino and Delicato made one heck of a play right there, and I don't have time to talk about it because that's Corey Walker scoring a goal. Corey Walker puts the puck in the net right in front of his grandma sitting here at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. Congratulations to Corey Walker. 12-0 now in favor of the Nashville Spartans. Free into the offensive zone. Looks to take the shot, and that puck is going to be in the net. That's a sick rip by Chris to make it 13 nothing Nashville Spartans. And the Spartans will maintain possession and break out with ease. Karaman has a lot of time and space right here. He walks in and tucks the puck into the net on the backhand. Karaman makes it 14 nothing Nashville Spartans. That was Hart with the shot right there. Turned aside by DiCarlo. He followed his own rebound all over the half wall. Picks up, looks for another shot. Fires it on the net. This one just wide of DiCarlo off the end wall. Spartans recover it. Chris Free jumps in to be the second attacker on there for the Spartans and help maintain possession. Sterling has it out high. He'll look to send the puck down low along the wall. Murray holds right along the wall. Tried to feather a pass across. Ends up going up in the air. Goes all the way across the zone to Hearts. One minute to go on the Spartans power play. Murray crashing the back door. And Murray puts the puck into the net. The delay by everybody. In the Great Lakes Division right now, that would have Toledo facing Cincinnati, these same Cyclones, and the Columbus Mavericks would face off against the Buffalo Stampede. Spartans and Jets wait at home while the Spartans score their 16th goal of the game. 30 seconds to go here in this regular season for the Nashville Spartans. What an honor and a pleasure it has been to be the voice of the Spartans for the last two seasons and to represent the USPHL on Flow Hockey. It has been tremendous. Of my 29 years as a professional broadcaster and entertainer, this has truly been some of the most fun and some of the most comfortable I have ever felt as a broadcaster. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your words. And most importantly, we'll see you in the playoffs. Spartans win 16-0 here to close out the regular season at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. They'll finish the season with a record of 36, seven and one. Second place will earn them a bye in the first round of the USPHL Great Lakes Division playoffs. And they will await the winners of next weekend series. And then we will find out who the Spartans play before coming back to the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena on Sunday, March the 10th at 6.30 p.m. Put it on your calendar. Book your tickets, get your hotel room, and get to the Nolensville area for the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena and the Nashville Spartans' first ever playoff game in history. Unofficially, Ronan Keenan wins the scoring title for the Nashville Spartans this season with 87 points. He ties Kyle Flynn with 87, but due to the goal tiebreaker, it will be Ronan Keenan taking the scoring title. It was family night here at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. We gave out flowers and we wrapped up the regular season. Again, an honor and a pleasure. The Spartans will come together here at Center Ice after stick taps and they will have their post game prayer and then we'll make our way out of the rink. We'll talk to all the families. Maybe we'll even grab a slice of pizza on the way out. What an incredible season it has been for the Nashville Spartans who go 15 and one on home ice score 152 goals on the season and have eight shutouts. I have been and will continue to be the voice of the Nashville Spartans. Charlie Sonia, what an honor. What a tremendous season and it's just getting started. You're watching Nashville Premier Junior Team, the Nashville Spartans, right here on Flow Hockey. Good night from the Nashville area.